Hi, my name is Ruben Gonzalez. Uh, I'm a sophomore at Jefferson High School. Uh, I'm representing Team 1646, uh, Precision Guessworks. Hi, I'm Ian, a junior at Jefferson High School, and I'm on the electronics team at, uh, for 1646. Hi, I'm Joe. Uh, I'm a senior at Jeff High School. I'm in the travel AP course. All right, these are a few tools that uh, we use for electronics. This is a very common one, very cheap. Uh, it'll do everything you need. You can cut wires at the tip. Uh, just past that, you have a point where you can crimp insulated terminals. They're col color-coded for size. Uh, in the back, you have a point where you can crimp uh, non-insulated terminals. And behind that, you can strip wire. And you pretty much just fit the wire in, into the slot where uh, if you're stripping wire, you do it back here into the right side of the slot. And you do that for each whatever you need to do. Uh, some tools, if you can afford them, if you can get your hands on them, that are really nice and will make the entire job easier. Uh, this is a wire stripper that instead of having to uh, grip the wire and then pull it off yourself. It'll actually close onto the wire, hold it, and it'll strip the wire or strip the insulation off the tip of the wire, saving you a lot of effort. Uh, this tool is a ratcheting insulated crimper, uh, insulated crimp or insulated terminals. Uh, take a lot of force to uh, securely crimp down, and this reduces the effort by a significant amount and it just makes the job more pleasant. Uh, strip wire using the super multi tool. Uh, you take the wire and you put it in between point with the wire stripper. It's labeled nice and in yellow. You grip it together, make sure you have it tight and it's in the right spot for the right gauge, and then you pull it off the wire. And depending on how thick the insulation is and what gauge the wire is, this will take a lot of effort. Yeah. And now you have a nice clean point to connect terminals or whatever else you're going to use the wire for. To crimp an insulated terminal, first strip the end of your wire. You want to have just enough copper exposed to make good contact with the terminal. Then place your terminal over the end of the wire and crimp, making sure you use the correct size on your crimper for the terminal you're using. Afterwards, Give it a tug to make sure that it's on securely. To connect the battery to the Anderson connector, first install the screw terminal. Make sure that it is very tight. You don't want your battery leads coming out during a match. Then, use a bolt and nut to fasten the terminal to the battery. When connecting a battery terminal to a wire, you want to make sure that it's facing inward so that you don't have the bolt jutting out to the side of the wire uh, so that it stays in place. Well, next, you got to wrap the terminals so as not to electrocute people. 
That's pretty much it. Ooh, yeah. What are you wrapping it with? Electric tape. And I'm doing a normal job, but... And you gotta make sure there's no metal sticking out, like right there. Um, this is a digital module. Um, this is the digital sidecar. And this is the Serio, which is a spare from Team 461 that, uh, graciously donated, or not donated, let us use it for the purposes of this video. Alright, so this is a DB, DB, DB37 cable, and it goes from the digital sidecar to the uh, digital module, so uh, it's, just, it's a good idea to tighten down the side screws. Alright. Now time for the other side. Is that it? Yep. There we go. Once again, tighten down the side screws. So now we will put the digital module in slot 4, which is right there. Okay, this is the analog uh, input module. This is the analog breakout. And this is the jumper, uh, which is used to, uh, uh, it's put on the anal uh, analog breakout so that you can measure uh, voltage. Next step is mm. to put this breakout into the module. Yeah. Finally, put it into slot one of the serial. Using the Wago tool, we will be putting this red wire into this slot. So, insert Wago tool up here. Uh, Top water. Um. All right. So insert Wago tool. Oops. Uh, okay. Now, once you get the slot open, put red the copper inside. Uh. Okay, now give it a slight tug, and you're done. The digital sidecar is powered by the power distribution board through a 20 amp breaker. Connect to the digital sidecar using a WAGO connector. We find it's easier to put the WAGO connector onto the digital sidecar first, and then put the wires in to make sure you get the correct polarity. Just like the connectors on the power distribution board, this Wago connector uses gates that can be opened with a screwdriver or the Wago tool. It's also a good idea to attach the connector to one end of the wire first, 
so that you can measure exactly how long your wire has to be. The robot signal light is connected to the digital sidecar next to where the Wagle connector for power goes. The LA and LB ports on the robot signal light should be bridged together and connected to positive, and the middle terminal should be connected to negative. We use a 2-pin solenoid cable for this. The black and red terminals supply power to the Jaguars. Note that with the older tan Jaguars, the screws should not be removed completely, as this will cause metal shavings to be released into the Jaguar, potentially causing broken Jaguars. With the newer black Jaguars, it's a good idea to use ring terminals instead of spade terminals so that they can't come out during a match. Now, connect wires from the output terminal of the Jaguar to your motors. Green corresponds to the black wire on your motor, and white to the red wire. If your terminals don't have shields, like ours, make sure you wrap them with electrical tape. The Jaguar is controlled by a PWM signal from the digital sidecar. Connect it using a 3-pin servo cable. Note that both the Jaguar and the digital sidecar have markings as to which direction the PWM cable needs to face. The CRIO is powered by the 24 volt port on the power distribution board. If you're using 24 volt solenoids, this is also where your solenoid module will get power from. Use the four connector screw terminal blocks to connect the CRIO and the power distribution board. Please note that parts of the CRIO case are conductive, but it absolutely must be electrically isolated, especially from your robot frame. This includes bolts used to mount it. The analog module is powered by 12 volts through a 20 amp breaker through the power distribution board, much like the digital sidecar. The 2011 radio is powered by a DC-DC converter, which takes 12 volts from the power distribution board, as shown here. Make sure you look at the specs on the back of the DC converter and the radio to ensure that the polarity lines up. The radio is not reverse voltage protected, so use special caution here. Make sure to securely fasten all loose wires. Loose wires pose a safety hazard and are potentially dangerous for your robot. Make sure that your battery is secure. If your robot flips over, the battery should still stay securely mounted. Insulate as much as possible. Be sure all 6-gauge lugs are fully covered. 